Well, welcome everybody to the FYI podcast where we talk about faith, life, and adulting. I'm Micah Keneally. And I'm Josiah Keneally. And we are your hosts. What's up, guys? We're so grateful that you're tuning in, that you are taking time on your Friday, which we drop one new episode every Friday, and hopefully uncover a question that you've been asking and lean into that answer um, and point you to the heart of Christ in the process. And you know, leave you wanting more. Hopefully that's what God is doing in this process of you tuning in. So Josiah, what can they do to get maybe more involved if they're just tuning in for the very first time? Man, if you can hit that subscribe button, Mm -hmm. this will then be delivered to your RSS feed straight to your phone, tablet, or device. And if you can leave us a rating, a comment, let us know how you're doing, where you're listening from, and Mm -hmm. what we could do better. Feel free to drop us a question Mm -hmm. at fyi-podcast.com. Of course, you could also... Um, join the conversation further at Instagram. Mm -hmm. We have an FYI podcast account. And today we are unpacking a passion point of mine. Great question that came in. And it is, can I trust the Bible? Right. Can I trust the Bible? I think Mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest questions that we've been getting lately. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people from all age groups in this generation are asking this question. Yeah, and I think it's a great question to ask me because that's showing that you're curious. That's showing that you're wanting to take and make your faith your own in the process of discovering who's Jesus, who's God, what's the Holy Spirit, who's the Holy Spirit. Can I trust truly what is written in these 66 books that are called the Old Testament and the New Testament? There's what happened in the middle. So it's like connecting all these dots, and hopefully this will help you uncover at least a portion of this question that maybe you're wrestling with today. And we can obviously take a look at something that we call the canonization um, of scripture as it's written, which the books are made up and cut up into the Bible and why some books did make it, why some books didn't make it and why they did or did not make it. So we are just going to list off maybe six things to kick us off. Like it had to go through a filter and a lens of these six things in order for it to make the cut in the word of God, right? That's called the canonization of scripture for those who are theologically inclined. Yes. Maybe I'm theologically not inclined. You you. are, babe. No, you are. (laughs) All right. So we're going to look at number one. I'm going to read these off because I don't want to forget them. And so number one, it is written by a recognized prophet or apostle recognized by a written prophet or apostle. Do you want to unpack any of these like one sentence or say, what does that mean? Perfect example with number one, Mm -hmm. a lot of like Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, about two thirds of the New Testament of the Bible was written by the apostle Paul. Right, that's good. And there's more than one account in him, right? Mm -hmm. So number two, it is written by those associated with recognized prophets or apostles so these would be eyewitness believers right for example matthew mark john and luke acts are actually i don't know if you knew this but the book luke and the book acts was actually one letter Mm -hmm. one collection called luke acts and um they axed that in half yeah well maybe not really it was really (laughs) the the gospel and then the acts of the apostles and and they were written by eyewitness accounts yeah. So then question three that we need to ask ourselves, does it do mm-hmm. this, is is there truthfulness in that? Is there truthfulness in what the people are experiencing, what the, the leaders and what the people groups are experiencing, the people who have the pen and paper who are mm-hmm. doing this? Is there more than one account that we can kind of talk to the same individuals, right, and get a similar story? Like how truthful exactly. is and are those aspects of what we're uncovering yep. or reading in the Word of God. So good. And then number four is faithfulness to previous accepted canon, canon, canonical, that's the word of the day, writings. Josiah, tell yeah. me about that word. Yeah, so if you study <laughs> church history, they had these councils. The church councils were usually mm-hmm. held in Rome, and this is where decisions like the canonization of Scripture took place. They brought together all of the church leaders Mm -hmm. and um, this is where there was votes or discussions Mm -hmm. and so there there's probably about four or so canonization discussions documented through church history at the council of 
you'll, you'll see the different church councils are named, but you can follow them throughout church history. And say that word again. Canonical. Canonical writings. That's the word that I cannot say. So say, number that, say that one three times fast. Oh, I can't say it one time slow. <laughs> <laughs> so the fifth thing we kind of look at is, is it confirmed by Christ, a prophet or apostle? And you can look at this in mm-hmm. Luke 24, 44 and 2 Peter three sixteen. So anything else you want to add? Yeah. So Jesus is handed the scroll of which book often when he taught in Isaiah. This, Isaiah. Isaiah is the number one quoted, I think Psalms might mm-hmm. be, but you notice that, I mean, even uh, Paul, he quotes Isaiah more than anything mm-hmm. else. He will quote Psalms. So they would have had some of these scrolls memorized right. or at least accessible to them. Right. As, because as Paul's writing these epistles, these letters that are written by the apostles to Timothy or to the church at Ephesus or the, to the church at Corinth, he's not trying to write the Bible. Right. He's actually trying to write instruction of how to have theology or mm-hmm. how to put your faith into action. That's so good. So the sixth thing is church uses and recognition. Yeah, so this one with usage is really fascinating, mm-hmm. but... You'll see the Catholic um, Bible, if you will, is actually different than the Protestant Bible. And this Mm -hmm. goes back to the Reformation of the church and church history. And bottom line, you'll see Old Testament and New Testament. If you go to a Catholic church, for example, you'll notice they have an intertestamental period Mm -hmm. called the Apocrypha, Book of Maccabees and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. But it didn't meet the council's um, usage. Nobody was really teaching or preaching in the churches of Rome mm-hmm. or throughout church history. There's, they're like, nobody's using the book of Maccabees for second or third Maccabees. Nobody's really talking about, um, you know, some of these letters. And so usage, mm-hmm. they just right. weren't being used. And, and, or maybe they weren't um, eyewitness accounts or written by an apostle. Right. And so therefore, that's why you have, that's how the Bible came to be the Bible. Mm-hmm. And as Andy Stanley often points out, hmm. our faith isn't in the Bible as Christians. In fact, there wouldn't be a, the Bible without the event of Jesus death on the cross, Mm -hmm. burial, resurrection, and ascension. So because of Jesus predicted his own death Mm -hmm. and then ascended from the dead, that's how we have a Bible is because it all, the Old Testament points towards there's a Messiah coming. Right. He's then the Messiah. And then the New Testament is kind of instruction on how to follow Christ. Right. And, um, you can also look at historical, you know, there's a lot of theologians, a lot of historians, most prominently in the Jewish culture would be Flavius Josephus. And you can, on Amazon, man, get the works of Josephus. Mm -hmm. Um, they're readily available and accessible. And he basically, as a Jewish historian, there weren't many other writers. Mm -hmm. So even the fact that we have a Bible is pretty rare in itself because it was more of an oratory, oral, verbal society. Mm -hmm. Um, Literacy, meaning reading and writing, weren't as common. It would be the wealthy or the educated. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I mean, even if you were studying to be a priest or a rabbi, you'd have to memorize orally the the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, (laughs) Elic, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, kind of the Torah. And I'll just say this. Having recently visited Israel myself, Mm -hmm. I'm inspired by a few things. The first is the land. Geographically, Mm -hmm. one of the main characters in the Bible that was overlooked is the land. Mm -hmm. The Sea of Galilee. The Mount of Beatitudes. The Jordan River. Mm Mm-hmm. Israel itself, Egypt, where Jesus with Mary and Joseph fled, you know, under Herod's reign. Like these places were landmarks and there is archaeological findings still being uncovered. I went to Israel in 2014, Mm -hmm. went back just in 2022, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. You know what? The entire city of Magdala, yep, 
where Mary Magdalene is from, mm -hmm. they uncovered an archaeological excavation that wasn't there even five years ago. Right. So they are still uncovering artifacts that, oh, yeah, Jesus probably would have taught at this temple. This is where Mary Magdalene was from. Mm -hmm. And um, also maps of both present day and Bible times revealed that there mm -hmm. was and is a Sea of Galilee. There was and is a city of Jerusalem with a wall, mm -hmm. with a temple. And I just look at it this way. If I can trust the writer to say the right city, to say the right part of the Bible, I can trust that the other part of the things that their claims that Jesus lived, walked on earth, turned water to wine, raised Lazarus from the dead, healed the sick, cast mm -hmm. out demons. I just mm -hmm. believe that it builds my faith to grow in the knowledge, meaning, and applications of scripture as well as the Bible's reliability. And I think one of the most um, recent, as in 1940s, so one of the most prolific discoveries in the world was the Dead Sea Scrolls in mm -hmm. the Qumran community. Mm -hmm. These are on display. Sometimes they travel throughout different states. I hope you get to see them, but I've seen them at the Science Museum. I've also seen them, the entire scroll of Isaiah on display in Israel. That's Crazy. huge. So the fact that these scrolls and, and letters were in circulation, that the copies and the manuscripts match, this is a, a profound discovery to confirm the trustworthiness and reliability of scripture. Well, I think you can even look at the aspect of the historian, the person who may not even be a Christ follower, who his, historically can't disprove that Jesus Christ was on this earth right. walking at some point in time in history. Yeah. Right? Like you said, these, these cities are being dug, these artifacts are being dug. It was just a shepherd boy, I think, playing with the slingshot that heard the crash yep. of the, the vase, which yep. held these, these scrolls way back in, like, in the 40s, like you mm -hmm. were saying, and then to uncover this whole cave full of them and it makes me think and wonder how much more history has not yet been told so found good. discovered or maybe exposed to the rest of the world mm -hmm. um, in a sense but if we look at like you said the different findings the different people groups the different um just cultures that are currently taking place they all tell a similar story even if they're part of a different culture mm -hmm. from their vantage point that's the only difference they're sitting Beautiful. in a different seat yep. right and anybody who's ever tried to disprove jesus god the word of god one or two things have happened they're still on the hunt to disprove or two they've had a radical encounter with with or through the word of god himself and have become Christians, have become Christ followers out of trying to disprove something they didn't believe in in the first place, but have had a radical transformation. And many of them had die, have died for the name of Jesus or have yeah. experienced the fullness, the greatness of God in the process of trying to disprove who he was or who he wasn't or if he actually even existed. Him himself, but let alone the, the word and the, the life manual that we get to choose to participate in and i always want to encourage if you're the listener today and you are very skeptical skeptical about the the word of god and the bible itself the new king's james james version version the message niv nlt mm -hmm. and sometimes people get caught in the weeds of which version should i read listen they are all written in a way that the american mind can hopefully process and uncover so for some people love the message because it's written a little more in like a paragraph summary kind of mm -hmm. way versus the thus saith thou shall and it just kind of eliminates some of that i don't know poetry kind of feel or that ancient, ancient yeah. kind yeah, of feel which is not bad but sometimes you Oh, I just kind of feel stupid reading it or I don't really understand yep. what they're saying there. Yep. So just even challenging, I want to challenge you, read the word of God that is a true Bible for the next 30 days. So good. And if you're truly in it and you're reading it and you're doing it and you're asking questions and you're perplexed by it, and if your life isn't impacted, changed, or inspired for the better, like we want to hear from you, but you need to be 100% in, meaning I have read the Bible, not the entire Bible, where should they start? What's a great one for somebody to start who's maybe like, dang, like I'm really 
we always point people to John, it feels like. And I'm not saying that's bad, but Matthew, Mark, Luke, John are some great places to start. That's the New Testament. That is after Jesus is Jesus is arriving on the scene, right? Yep. So do you have something to say? You look excited. No, I, I do. And, oh, and yeah, here's, here's what I would say, Micah, you were talking a second ago about like some of the great minds throughout history who've set out to disprove God, disprove Christianity, yes. disprove the Bible. Two names I think you should know. Two names I think you should pay attention to. Number one is C.S. Lewis. Ooh, yeah. He studied as a student at Oxford University, went on to be a professor as an atheist. Didn't believe there was a God. Then he went on record, which atheists don't like to do. Right. It's not good for street cred. He went on record saying, you know what? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he went on to write of so much of theology, of mere Christianity, of, I mean, a lot of his works have become movies. Right. And, um, Oh my right. gosh, if you think of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, he had such an imagination. But it's such like a mysterious, yes. like mystical way of like who God is. So yep. some of the creatures even emulate some of the things towards the end of the Bible exactly. in some way, shape, or form. You're like, yep. so, whoa. C.S. Lewis is a name you should know, the Chronicles of Narnia. Also, more recently in our lifetime, Lee Strobel was a investigative journalist for the Chicago Tribune. Mm -hmm. He set out, he was an investigative journalist. His wife gave her life to Christ. He wanted to disprove her. I did not know this. He met Jesus. He met Jesus. There and you he's have written it. The Case for Christ. His life story is a movie that you can find readily available, The Case for Christ. And I would just say this. John, where Micah sent us to start, chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, reminds us the whole Bible is actually a love letter. And this mm -hmm. is what God says that. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did, did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save mm. the world through him. Romans goes on to say that anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Mm -hmm. So if you're curious, if you can be in right standing with God, if you can have peace with God, if you can trust God, if you can trust the Bible, if you can trust the church, do your own investigative deep right. dive, and I would just say this. I believe that you can trust the Bible, and if you want to put your hope in Jesus, the mm -hmm. Word of God who's become flesh, you can pray, mm -hmm. you can admit that you've sinned, believe in the Savior, Savior, and confess and forsake your sins, and you know what? You can be born again. You can give mm -hmm. your life to Christ. You can have peace with God, and if you'd like to do that, let us know. And we'd like to support you on this exciting decision and this yeah. journey of discipleship. You can visit and check out fyi-podcast.com and click on Respond to Faith. Until next time. This is Mike and Josiah. See you soon.